Today we're going to fit this wireless thermostat onto our combi boiler. Uh, these are quite good because once you've connected this to the boiler you can carry the thermostat with you and stick it in any room and it'll ensure that that room is at the correct temperature that you set the remote to. So they are really useful, especially if you've got a young child and you need to keep the room in a specific temperature. So if we just have a look in there, you can see we've got the user guide and the instructions for wiring it up. And then that's the actual port that you take into the room with you, that you program. That'll have all the sensors in it. And then that's the actual receiver that we connect to the boiler. And it's pretty simple to connect, there's only actually four wires. So before you do anything, you need to have a look at the manuals. So this is the one that came with the thermostat, and that's the manual for the boiler. Now, before we actually start doing this, I'd just like to point out that it is in a kitchen, and it's now considered a special location. But I have phoned the LABC up, uh, which is the local area building control, and I have actually asked them if I need to get it tested, or if I need to get an electrician to do it for me. And they were quite happy for me to install this myself because it's not in an area where somebody can touch it. And the installation's already here, so it's just classed as an addition to the existing installation. So they were quite happy for me to install this myself on this boiler. So we need a live and a neutral, which goes through a double pole switch. And then a fuse that is smaller than 5 amps. And then all we need to do is take a connection to the neutral and a connection to the live and what we're going to do is we're just going to piggyback those connections from the connections that are already on the boiler because they already go through a double pole switch and the fuse and then if we look over here at T1 and T2 you can see that that goes to A and B on the actual boiler so this is the actual manual that came with the boiler now and of course we're wiring up at the room thermostat so we need to look on there and we can see that a room thermostat is number 72 on the diagram above. So I'll just zoom into that now. So you can see there that that is terminal 72 there. So what we're looking for when we get in the boiler is a connector and it should actually have a link in it. And what we'll do is we'll remove that link and then we'll put our two wires in there that are coming from the actual thermostat receiver and that should be it it's as simple as that they're just alive and a neutral and then two switching wires to connect and it's as easy as that so it should be quite a simple thing to wire up if you're not entirely sure what you're doing though it's important that you consult somebody and get some advice because if you wire it up wrong you can blow the PCB on your boiler which you don't really want to do because it'll be very expensive so if you don't know what you're doing you need to ask somebody first, get some advice, and make sure you're wiring it up correctly. So before we start, we're going to switch the boiler off. And then we're just going to pop the fuse out of there, just to be on the safe side. So we'll take the fuse out, and also, it's actually a 3 amp fuse, that. Which is perfect, because it should be less than 5 amps. So now I'm just going to remove the boxing in from below the boiler and then I'm just going to remove the case from the boiler itself. And then I'm just going to remove these two screws and I'm going to pull the front panel down so that we can get to the electrical wiring. So now I'm just going to remove these two screws and then we can get into the actual PCB bit and the bit where the actual wires are and then we'll just lift that clear and then before we do anything else we're just going to get our approved voltage checker we're just going to test it's working by pressing the test button and then we're just going to check a couple of places on the boiler to ensure that it is completely dead so all we need to do is probe some of the terminals So we can be confident now that that is actually dead, it is isolated correctly. So we're just going to test the tester again. So now we know that that's working, so now we know that we can work on this quite safely. 
without fear of anything being live at all. So I've now got the PCBs in view and I've also got the manual here and we need to connect the room thermostat there to that terminal but I haven't actually found it yet so what I did is I've traced the wires back there to the, those two black wires in terminals 1 and 2 which are those two terminals there terminals 1 and 2, the two black wires and they actually go across there and down there and if you actually just lift that bit up there we've actually got an access panel down here and when you open the access panel you can actually see the actual connector block for the 72 which we're after so I'm actually going to fasten this back up now so that it's out of the way and then we can make all our connections just underneath there which should be pretty easy before we connect any wires to the boiler I'm going to start sighting the actual receiver box and I've read the instructions and it says that it needs to be at least 30 centimeters away from your actual boiler or anything metallic such as uh, a cooker rod or anything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it approximately there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my wires up there put this boxing in so I'll just drill an hole through the side of it pass the wires down and then bring them around there up into the boiler because these pipes are going to get hot I've actually bought heat resistant flex and I'm going to use that to do the wiring in. So this is underneath the boiler and that's the existing live neutral and earth going in and then that's the actual terminal there where we're going to remove the link and then connect up the two switching wires from the thermostat. So we've got two lens of this heat resistant flex that we're going to be using to connect the boiler up to the wireless relay. The big problem when you're trying to terminate flexible wire is that the strands separate when you're pushing it into the terminals. So for that reason it's a good idea to twist them together. And then it's a good idea to tin them with a bit of solder. So I've twisted that together, I'm just going to do the same with that one. And then we're just going to put a little bit of solder on the end. So that's the tip of the soldering iron. And that's the wire that I'd like to tin. So if we just put a bit of solder on the soldering iron first. And then just touch the solder onto it. But we'll just do the same again. You don't need to leave it on there long. Just touch it on there. And get a bit of solder on there. So to identify this wire as the switching wire we're going to wrap some black insulation tape around both of the wires. And then we'll put some heat shrink sleeve in, just on the end bit there. So we've put the insulation tape on there and the heat shrink sleeve in on the end. So now all we need to do is apply heat to the end of that and it will shrink. So you can do this using a soldering iron. And now that has actually shrunk onto the end of there. So we're just going to do that on the brown wire there. And then we're going to do it to the other end as well. And then we know that this is our switching cable. So you can now see here that I've connected the live and neutral. And there I've connected the two switch wires. I've also put a piece of mini trunking on there as well to make it look a little bit neater. And these cables that are in here, I will actually get some clips tomorrow and I'll actually clip those cables so that they're not actually touching the pipe. Although it is heat proof cable, it's still better if it's not actually touching the actual pipe itself. So before I put the boxing in back on the front of here, I will clip those cables so that they're out of the way. So now all we need to do is put the front on the relay box. So 
So this cable with the two black wires coming out of it is a switching cable. So that needs terminating into this block here. And then once we put those in we'll just give them a tug and see if they come out again and they don't do which means that they're secure and then here we have the live and the neutral connections so to get those in we need to loosen the existing neutral and then slide that in alongside the existing wire And then we just need to loosen the live terminal off. And then we can slide the live wire in there with the other live wire. And then when we've done that we just need to give those a tug and just make sure that they're nice and tight, which they are. So now we can put the cover back on there. So we're now going to put the fuse back in. Then we're going to switch the boiler back on. So we now need to get this to connect to the actual relay. Now I've already set the time on this, so I'm reading the instructions as I go, it's telling me actually what's, what I need to do. So apparently I need to press those two buttons and that button for three seconds. And now it's in the test transmit mode. So I'll now let go of those. And you can see on the relay box that the green LED is flashing, which is what it's supposed to do. So if we just check how often the LED flashes, it should be every six seconds. And once it flashes every six seconds, we can then proceed to the next step. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's roughly six seconds. Now we can proceed to the next step. So we'll now check the system's working okay. So we've got the thermostat port now that's still in the test transmit mode. And I've got it in the room where I want to test it. So I'm just going to go back to the boiler now and show you that the relay box is still flashing green. So I've been to the boiler and the relay unit is still flashing green. So we can now take it out of the test mode by switching it into auto. and then I've now switched it to the off position. So I'm just gonna go back to the boiler and check that the green flashing light has gone off. So we can now check that it's working correctly. Uh, I've actually put it in manual. So if we start increasing the temperature on the remote, I've actually set the room temperature to 19 degrees, which is what's recommended for a baby. So we're actually just gonna take that up a bit to maybe 24 degrees or something. 23, 24 and you can see that as soon as I've got to 24 the boiler's actually just kicked in and also the green lights come on the relay box. So now we know that this is communicating with the boiler and it's, it's telling the boiler to come on to increase the temperature. So now we know it's working 
correctly as it should do.